Today we're working on the 300ZX. We got a lot of work to do. What we got, Ricky? Uh, I gotta finish my electrical work, so we're gonna finish it today. I'm gonna mount the starter so Ricky can get started on the power wires, and our transmission is finally in. We've got some good products from Phase 2 Motor Trend for the 300ZX today, and one of them is a super critical piece that we need to get on today. So we've got a pulley kit, so this is the water pump, power string, and the alternator pulley. I love the color on these. We've got a cast cover, so this replaces the factory cover on the crank angle sensor. It's just like a black hard plastic and doesn't look very nice right now. And we've got the starter. So this is critical to get in today so Ricky can finish his wiring. We need to modify it to work with the Masworks adapter plate for the VG Trans. So let's get started. How do you want to route this? Do you want to like come in towards the engine or do you want to just like do one of those right there? The terminal I can bend, right? Yeah. So it can bend like this, like real good. So if you want, we can go like this and make like a little S. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay. Look at this beautiful cable, ready to go. So it's going to go from my splitter here. So the ECU is going to go right in that plate. So I left all this space available for it. So I should only take a little bit of a corner on the side. And from here, we're going to go straight to the starter and we should be good to go. Let's do it. Ah! I've got our hyper tune intake manifold back on the SR20. And the reason I put it on is because we're actually gonna start working on the fuel system, getting everything set up and mounted so we can actually start running the line. So here I've got everything we're gonna be using completely laid out. So we've got a fuel filter kit by Dishworks, our fuel pressure regulator kit from Dishworks. We've got a fuel pressure gauge we need to add into the rail. And we've got, of course, an assortment of fittings. So this is a really nice piece by Radium. This is a bypass for our flex fuel sensor. So we can have a flex fuel sensor on the feed side without impeding flow, which is really cool. And of course, we have a Haltech pressure sensor Sensor. This is going to let the ECU know what the fuel pressure is at all times, and that's going to go on the front of the fuel pressure regulator, which is really nice. So, as far as layout in the engine bay goes, this is very similar to the GTST we did, which was an RB20. I have a ton of room back here underneath the intake manifold, so I think we're going to build a plate to put this guy, which is the ethanol sensor and the fuel pressure regulator, kind of on one mount, and then that will bolt to the frame rail on the underside of the car. What do you think? I like that. This is, this is gonna be here, right? Yeah, yeah, so that goes- This goes in the middle, the this goes next to it. Oh, how and cool. And we'll put this back by the fuel tank. So yeah. that's gonna allow us to run pretty much two lines straight all the way up to here without really any impediment aside from the fuel filter. And right. then everything else will be right here. The nice thing is, look how much room we got here, Ricky. It's gonna be all It's crazy kind of what happens when you take a V6 out of here, huh? <laughs> right? So one thing to keep in mind is that the fuel pressure regulator needs to be adjusted as we start and probably when we're on the dyno. So we don't want to completely bury it and hose ourselves, making it impossible to adjust the fuel pressure without disassembling. So I think that's a really good spot for a balance of tucking it and making it kind of highway in the engine bay and still have good accessibility to it. So let's get started. Hold on, my turn. I got to show my part oh, of the, yeah, of the fuel hard. system. While Quinn is doing with the mechanical stuff, I want to be working on the electrical stuff. So I have a bunch of wires here. I have relays here that I'm going to be using for the lift pump and our search tank. Um, so I'm going to be using two separate relays for it. And everything is going to be ran by the Haltech ECU that's not here, but it don't matter because I'm going to have everything ready. So when the ECU and the harness gets here, we'll make the signal wire come all the way to the back and be able to make one connection and everything else will be completely ready to go. Just finished making this plate which bolts to the frame rail and now i'm going to move on to this plate which is going to hold pressure regulator right there and the flex fuel sensor is going to bolt it right there we're going to offset these two plates weld it together and then we'll have a bolt-on bolt-off solution for the flex fuel and the fuel pressure regulator and it's going to tuck nicely up against the rail we can start working on lines let's go So 
there is the proof of concept for the mount. I gotta finish weld it and paint it, but we have the flex fuel sensor looking nice and the pressure regulator down there. And everything's tucked away all nicely. What are you working on? Two relays right now, one for the lift pump and one for the surge, the surge tank. So I have the positive cable done. I have two terminals done. I'm waiting for the terminals here to show up. I have both of them wired up, up to the relay. Ooh, hold on, let me get a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that looks sick. Go come see what I got. Yeah. It's cool how we're gonna meet in the middle and then like just have everything done. Right? You starting in the front, I'm starting in the back. I love doing stuff like this. Uh, oh, oh, now I see what you were trying to do. Ah. So the pressure regulator and the flex fuel nice. all set up. Nothing right goes there, huh? No, as far as that's I know, nothing. Crazy. Yeah. So that's like a good spot. And you've got room to like come in this way and get at the top of the little yeah. Nino and put a pressure sensor back down there. Yeah. You won't even notice it, dude. Be styling. Wow. So I forgot to mention to you guys, I actually picked up a new daily driver recently. My E36 M3 is a fantastic car and I love it and I'm keeping it. I'm never getting rid of that car, but it just, it's just a little bit too old, a little bit too leaky, a little bit too making too much suspension noise. So I bought a new daily driver. Check this out. This is a 2015 five liter Mustang GT with a six speed manual. And right now, I think this is the best performance car you can get for under $20,000. This has the Gen 2 Coyote in it. It's about a 435, 440 horsepower, and it is sick. We built one of these on the channel a while ago, and it was such a good car. And I remember it driving so nicely. I just had to pick one up. And on top of that, this one actually has like a $2,000 uh, upgrade center console. So really kind of modernizes everything. My M3 didn't have Bluetooth. It didn't have working AC. The heater didn't work at all because it started leaking, so I had to delete it. So this car is a much bigger car. It's a much nicer car. It drives a lot nicer and it's newer. It's got a little bit more power and it sounds amazing. I cannot wait to actually throw some mods on it. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do with it yet, but I think I'm just gonna drive it for now. So let's get back to the 300. I finished as much of the fuel system as I can while the car is on the ground. So now we're gonna move into the alternator setup. So this is a Platinum Racing Products LS1 alternator conversion kit for the SR20. The factory SR alternator is about 90 amps. This one's about 150. So if we want to increase the amount of output we're using with electronics like the ECU or a stereo or an audio system or something like that that draws current, we know we're gonna have a solid alternator that's gonna work very well. So very nice kit by Platinum Racing Products. I cannot wait to see it on the SR20, but we gotta get the intake manifold back off to do it. Let's go. That is a great little spot for the fuel filter, but before it goes up there permanently, we need to put the filter inside of it, so let's get it down and actually build it. Now it's time for the big fuel line that goes from the fuel filter all the way to the flex fuel sensor. Let's do it. Oh. 
you get in there? Oh. Yeah, that right. easy. Right. That right. easy. So I think I'm gonna go. Oh, you're talking about your stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'm, here, I'm, I'm here to work on my stuff. I'm gonna finish this so, right now. Where do I go? What do you mean? Do I go like this here? Is return. Wait, so you have two lines coming? Yeah. You have a six and an eight. Six and an eight, yeah, exactly. So I wonder if I could like come like this and then. Come Where's straight. the filter here? Filter's like here ish. So I could go. Oh, can you go here? I could go straight with the six and then I could go kind of this way with the eight. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, do the best. Go. Yeah, yeah. What do you got to do up here? Oh, this needs to go to us. Terminals finally showed up. I saw, we were locking up. They were like, oh, here's the terminal. I'm like, man. Wait, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Ooh, those yeah. are battery terminals? Yeah, that's dope, huh? Oh. All right, there, look at this. Sick. One there. Those are huge. If they fit. One there. They are kind of big. They look smaller. They on the are bigger. huge, huh? Yeah. One there. One here. Come on, fit. Come on, fit. Something like that. And then the wires are gonna go straight down. And we'll be set, baby! All right, so let me show you what I got done so far. We have both relays done. Everything is wired up, tucked all the way in the back to here. We have lift pump, we have surge pumps. I mean the surge tank with the two pumps. Two or three pumps? Two pumps. Two pumps in there. We have both terminals in. All the power is already uh, done and wired all the way to the front. The signal wires for the lift pump and for the uh, surge pump are already ready to go where the ECU is gonna be mounted. And we have our negative that ends here because our cutoff switch is gonna be here underneath all the panels, that way you can't see it. However, when we store it, we can just cut the power out. Everything loses power, our battery is still good for the next time we need to use it. That's what I got done so far. Once that breaker shows up, I'll be able to put everything back together and be completely done. And my boy Quinn, it looks like you're almost done. I'm done, I have two lines that I need to do and then the fuel system will be completely finished. Dude, that looks really good. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's nice and tucked, nice and neat. Oh, we can cover this up right now then, right? Yeah, 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 ah. no there's no reason. To do uh, so this is gonna get rewrapped. That Mickey has to rewrap a bunch of stuff, not rewrap it, wrap uh, all the other stuff that's left over in the car. So he's gonna do that when he gets back. This goes here. Come on, baby. Bada 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 boom. Good job, man. Nice. I need to make a fuel line that goes from here to there, and then we need to make one that goes from here all the way to there, and then the fuel system will be complete. The fuel system is fully complete on the 300ZX, so we're gonna move into the engine wiring harness. This is a hugely critical part for getting this car fired up. And of course, we have a harness from Wiring Specialties. Now, I absolutely love Wiring Specialties. The main reason is we called them up and said, I need a SR20 engine harness that's 300ZX on the chassis side and uses a Haltech Elite 1500, and they said, we got you, and this is what they came up with. All the harnesses they do are extremely well set up. Literally every single thing is labeled. So here we've got fuel pressure. This one says, manifold air pressure we've got boost solenoid everything is labeled making this super easy to install and of course we're running a Haltech Elite 1500 on this and we've got all the flying leads and all that stuff that we need to be able to wire in everything so here we've got additional DPOs and SPOs this is all fan relay stuff we've got a grounding kit so we've got a lot of stuff to install you hey. like that you ready you ready Do we're it. gonna start wiring baby Ooh, I look well, that's a lot of freaking stuff. It is. So the first step that I always do when installing wiring harness is just kind of go through everything and get familiar with all my connections and where everything needs to be. Mm -hmm. But I think this one's gonna be really Check straightforward. There's... So we've got a lot of work to do. It's gonna be super easy to get this set up. I already think we have the bulkhead figured out for getting into the chassis side. So we're gonna lay everything out and then Ricky's gonna sort uh, the ECU mounting and all that stuff once we get it inside of the car. I'm gonna start getting the wiring harness installed and bolted down to the engine block. We can start running things. We still have a bunch of sensors to install. The NOx sensor needs to go on. We've got a few sensors that are critical that we need to get on the engine, but this is a big step forward in getting that done. So let's get started. So 
I started the harness install off with our grounding kit. So I've got a few multi-point grounding kits on the engine. We also have the coil harness on as well because that has a ground on the cylinder head. Now we have a couple of sensors to install. We've got a Haltech knock sensor and a Haltech a manifold air pressure sensor. We're gonna get these mounted. I've got two heater core lines I need to run and that will pretty much be everything where it needs to be underneath the intake manifold so we can start actually laying the harness out. Mm, can't wait. Well, that's one more step closer to get to this thing to fire up. Engine harness is laid out. We've got it pulled through the firewall. Now we can start plugging all of the stuff in and everything's nice and labeled. So that's the starter, so that's gonna go there. And as we start plugging things in, I'm also gonna start attaching the harness to the engine block and kind of tucking it. And hopefully it looks like a mess right now, but once it's all done, it should look very nice. got the main loom kind of bolted to the engine block and a few of the lower things installed such as the starter, the knock sensor, the oil pressure sensor, and both of our fuel system wires. From here, these guys right here are all transmission stuff except for the long one, which is this guy, which is our boost controller. So that's probably gonna end up on that side of the engine bay over there. From here, I'm gonna actually move some of this stuff over. So this is like our intake air temp, our coolant temp, uh, the map, and our cast system. I'm gonna start working that, getting it secured on the side of the cylinder head. We do have to change the coolant temp setup. When we spec the wiring harness, we're gonna run a factory coolant temp and now we've actually switched to a hall tech so i've set a lead for my new coolant temp sensor so we're gonna have to run that and essentially this is gonna get sort of mounted and tucked up under here and then we can start running the wiring from there but i'm focusing on getting this harness looking nice and tucked especially on the sr20 because the alternator sits so low you're gonna have a pretty good clean sight line into underneath the engine bay and i don't want to see an absolute huge mess of wiring so i'm taking my time being patient tucking everything and in the end we're gonna have a nice looking engine bay We've got one more big power cable to make and ready. Nice, let's get it on. Harness, feel this. Ooh, nice tug. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Wow. Oh, that's cool how you did it. That's really I like rad. modified one of those little self tap screw stands and yeah. like made it work. Um, it's like all the pickups were huge and nothing yeah. could really grab that. So that's I think it looks really, nice. It yeah, looks that's really cool. Oh, we have an alternator now. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, the starter is already wired up to the all oh, to the alternator too. Yeah, baby. Almost there, dog. We're yeah. almost there. Oh, I see the map sensor over there. The E85 sensor is hooked up. Damn, this thing's gonna start up soon. So I've got all of the wiring underneath the intake manifold completely finished, which means the intake manifold can actually go on for the final time. We have Platinum Racing Products titanium studs, which is super awesome, and we've got a lot of vacuum mines to run as well, so we're gonna knock that out.
Next up for the Z, we're gonna be installing our Mishimoto fans. So these are direct fit onto the radiators that we already have in the car. Wiring specialties also provided this standalone fan harness. So we're actually gonna wire this into the Haltech instead of using this little temperature pro, but it's got two relays on it. So we're gonna be able to run each fan independently. And of course it's loomed so we can make a quick disconnect, which is awesome. With the fans installed, we can actually kind of start to get our spacing and it's gonna make it a lot easier to actually make our radiator hoses. Again, these are dash 20. So we're gonna have to fab those up and get them mounted. Once the fans are installed, all we have to do is make our radiator hoses and essentially the cooling system will be completely complete. So let's go. Most of the fan wiring is completed. The only thing I have left is this harness here. I'm actually gonna modify this. So this was originally set up for a thermo temp switch for a standalone management system. We're gonna take all of these wires apart because there's six of them. We only need three. We need one ground and two signal wires. We're gonna run the signal wires all the way up inside the car. From there, the Haltech ECU is gonna take over and actually run a digital pulsed output to turn the fans on and off. So the ECU is gonna control everything, which is awesome. From there, we're gonna tuck all this stuff up nice so Ricky doesn't get mad. There's wiring all over the place and it's gonna look nice and then that'll be it and then our fans will be done. We are dialed in for the fan system. Everything is ready to go, and we are so close to getting this thing fired up for the very first time. The engine wiring is about 95% completed. I have to run the throttle position sensor, and that is literally it. We can actually fire the SR20 up once the ECU gets here. We've got a couple more things to wire inside of the engine bay. The boost controller, of course, we gotta do the wastegate, wastegate lines, all that stuff. And we have some fabrication to do. We've gotta do the exhaust side of the turbo. We gotta do the hot side of the turbo and the charge pipes as well. But none of that is really needed to actually actually get the SR20 fired up and started. That is gonna be it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much as always for watching. Don't forget to drop a comment down below on how you think this build is turning out. Let me know what you think of the engine bay. The fact that this is almost a running engine and it still looks this clean is super sharp. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Throttle YouTube channel, guys, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.